What's going on, y'all? Blue Falcon here coming to you with another video. So it's been a long time coming, but as I've promised, I'm here with the next music video in this music series. All right. So as you can see on the board, this is gonna be rhythm part one. All right, number uno. Now, first things first, I'm gonna just go over a quick definition of rhythm. I've already done it in, I believe, music lesson number one, but just in case, because it's been a while, so just to refresh your memory, rhythm means duration of sounds and silences. Again, duration of sounds and silences, meaning how long or how short you play your notes. All right, and let me put emphasis on silence. All right, because the silence, meaning the breaks within how you produce sounds, is just as equally as important as the sounds that you actually produce itself. Now, here's one thing I really want to point out to you, right? And you can't is probably remember I did this example before, but just to show you the difference, right? If I play something as simple as this, right? Just in case you didn't see when I did it the first time, you're probably thinking, that doesn't really sound like anything, right? It doesn't really sound like music. Okay, now I'm going to play the same exact notes, but this time I'm going to alter the rhythm, right? Right? And we probably all know that's joy to the world, right? Cool. Now, why am I using such an elementary song? I'm trying to show you the importance of rhythm. I could play the same exact notes, but if I change how I play the notes, again, how I play the notes, that's so important to your overall musicality and overall how people is gonna perceive your musicianship. So again, please guys, do not take this study for granted. It's extremely important. But I do want to bring forth to you just some basic elementary things, all right? So within music, we have certain notes that we're going to play, right? Now, this right here, this note right here is what's called a whole note, okay? So it's a circle and it's blank. The circle is white, if you want to call it that, or it's blank, as you would see, right? The second note that we have here is also a white circle but notice it has what's called a stem okay it has a stem and this is called the head of the note okay so you have the head and you have the stem it is also white now this third note i should have colored this in but essentially it's it looks just as the second note but this time it's colored in when you read in music paper the color would be black all right but it looks just like the second note, but it's colored in and it also has a stem. Now you'll see, notice that on the board I have put equal and I left it blank. And then there's now what we call our rest. All right. So when you have a line, right? <laughs> when you have a line, and I should have colored had to color this in. But you when you have a line and then you have like this black box hanging down below it, that's what's called a whole rest, all right? So let me put this over here just so that you guys can see it. Whole, right? This is half, and this is a quarter. And I'm gonna explain that all to you in further detail as the video goes on. This right here, again, if you see a line and you see a box hanging below that line, that's a whole rest, all right? So this is a hole as well. Now, if you see a line and you see a box hanging above the line, that's a half rest. And last, if you see like this squiggly line right here, that's called a quarter rest. Now, one thing, sometimes, a lot of times, students tend to forget, 
you know, what's the difference between the whole and the half? The best way I like to think about it is that if you look at this one where the box is hanging above the line, notice it kind of looks like a hat. And if you could probably zoom in if you want, like to, to see it closer, but it looks kind of like a hat. So think of it, hat, half, right? It both starts with the letter H. That's a good way for you to try to remember it, all right? But essentially, that's what it is. Now, remember I told you, if you good at math, you're most likely going to be very good in music and vice versa, all right? But you don't worry. You don't need no calculus level math. You don't need to know, you know, physics and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. It's just basic elementary math. If you know how to count your paper, count your money, you should be good, all right? So this is a whole. Now, I must address something before I continue. In music, there's a thing called a time signature, okay? Now, I'm probably going to put an image up on the screen for you to see it. But essentially, a time signature, it just indicates to you in what time, what's the time of our music. That's just me putting it in layman's terms, okay? Now, the thing that is important, on the other hand, if I may show you, is this. Let's assume that we're playing in the time signature of 4-4. Four, four. Right? And you've probably seen this before. It looks like a fraction, right? Now, the top number, right, the numerator, the numerator tells you how many beats per measure. The top number, the numerator, tells you how many beats per measure. The bottom number tells you which note takes the value of the beat. Again, the bottom number, the denominator, tells you what note takes the value of the beat. I'm going to explain all of this later on, right? But in short, a beat is nothing more, you know, a lot of times back in the days we used to say, oh man, that, that beat is dope. Oh, that beat is, and, we, <laughs> and truth be told, the beat is a lot more simpler than that, all right? A beat is literally as simple as this. That's literally the beat. You hear that? Now, I'm probably going to slow it down. And that is literally a beat. I know it doesn't sound interesting. So we were actually complicating it way more than we needed to. But a beat is literally just a steady pulse. That's all a beat is, guys. I know, not too fancy, right? <laughs> well, a lot of what we're going to find out is that back in the day when we were saying that beat is dope, what we probably really meant is that the rhythm, right? The rhythm was dope. Again, we're going to get into that, all right? But it's just a steady beat. So uh, why is this important? Because, again, you need to understand the beat because, as I've said before, the numerator tells you how many beats per measure. So in the case of a 4-4 four, four time signature, that means there will be four beats per measure. All right? Now, the bottom note tells you that how, what note takes the value of the beat, and because you see a four here, that means that's a quarter note, which is denoted right here. That's the quarter. This is the quarter rest. With that being said now, now we can get into the values, right? How many beats does this take? So if this is a whole note, that means within a given measure, you're going to be playing this only once because it's going to take the whole measure. And we already know that the top number tells us that there's only four beats per measure. So this has the value of four. This has the value of four beats within the context of 4-4, four, four. all right? Now, I put the equal sign after the 4, showing you that if you see this whole note, that also tells you that you must rest for four beats. And again, the beat, the beat is just a steady pulse. So if you were to count it, one, two, three, four, that's how long you should either be playing your note or that's how long you should be resting. Half note. Now, if you get at math, you would understand that a half is obviously half of the whole. So if the whole is four, four beats, that means the half 
What's half of four? Two. Right, exactly. So you have two beats. And again, the half rest also would have a value of two beats. Read, all right? Now last, a quarter, right? Just like in money, you need four quarters to make a whole dollar, right? So therefore, if, if just assuming that the whole, right, is four beats, which it does, that means the quarter, you need four of them to equal this whole, right? So therefore, the quarter note is only worth one beat. And then conversely, you have the quarter rest, which is also one beat. Now, there are several other notes, like there's the eighth note. I'm probably gonna go deeper into it in part two, but for the sake of this lesson, I just wanna keep it real short and to the point that essentially, this is how you would play these notes and play these rests, okay? Now, one thing that's extremely important in rhythm, right? When I want you to all take out your instruments, all right? Whether you play a uh, piano, whether you play saxophone, whether you play guitar, bass, whatever. You can, what, even if you're a singer, you're going to take out your notes and now we're going to play some things together, okay? Now, here's what I want you guys all to understand. I want you to understand that if we are playing these right, first off, in order to even play it right, you need to practice with a metronome. You got to practice with your metronome. Now, you know, back in the day when smartphones wasn't so readily available, you know, that cost me some extra to actually buy a metronome. Nowadays, you can just per you can just get the app, free apps that have a metronome. So I'll leave that up to you. You can choose whatever app you want. But get the app and then play along with the metronome. It will be boring. I'm letting you guys know this now. It's gonna be boring, but it is gonna be absolutely crucial if you actually want to progress moving forward in your musicianship. Don't skip these steps, all right? Now, let's get into this program called Logic. Now, the reason why we're gonna go into Logic is because I really wanna show you something, right? Again, if you're playing these notes the proper way, that means as I'm playing, I should be producing my, in, my intended and desired note. So, for example, right, we're going to listen to this metronome. Right? Now, you guys, I'm sure you all can hear this metronome going on, right? Let me pause it real quick. You can all hear this metronome going on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play alongside this metronome. Let's all choose the letter C. Now, for you piano players, you should already know what C is because I've played, <laughs> I've literally showed you how to find C. Matter of fact, truth be told, every musician here should know how to find C on the piano because I already said that I believe personally that you should at least invest in a piano. That should be the preliminary instrument at least you should start off with. You don't gotta perfect it, but at least know some basic music theory because it will help you moving forward. Now, I'm gonna play this metronome. Okay, you guys, you probably hear it in the background, okay? So try to pay attention to my voice while this is playing. I'm gonna play C. Now, as I'm playing C, I want you guys to bear in mind that I'm trying to play a whole note. All right? Now, if I'm playing this correctly, look what I'm going to do. And I'm going to purposely mess up. I'm purposely going to mess up just so that you guys can see it for yourselves, what it's supposed to look like. All right, now let's stop. Let's try to analyze these notes on the bottom. Do you notice something? I said I'm trying to play a whole note, but notice what happened. If I played it correctly, how come those notes look like it's black? That's because I did not play a proper whole note. So again, what I actually did, if you were paying attention, is that I played a quarter note. I only held it for one beat. I need to produce this note over here. 
all right? Meaning that if I played it, it should have a white circle without no stamp. Now I'm gonna play it the correct way. So now look at the bottom. Notice what happened this time around. Notice the notes have a it's a white circle and it has no stem. That is because I played a whole note. Now what was going in my mind? I'm gonna tell you. In the be when I'm I'm counting in my mind, all right you guys? So as the music is playing, because we in a 4-4 four, four time signature, I'm always counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm actually going to show you something as well. I want you to pay attention as well to my feet. As I'm counting, I'm always saying one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, this is extremely important, you guys. I can't stress this out enough. Please tap your feet, okay? You have to tap your feet, all right? Please do it because it's going to help you. I'm going to show you one more time, and this time I'm going to slow it down because I want you to pay attention to something, right? Because within every beat, there's what's called the downbeat and the upbeat. I'm going to explain in further detail. All right? So... Notice my feet. I'm saying one, two, three, four. So the downbeat is when my feet is down, and as I hit the floor, that's when I count. One, two, three, four. All right? And mind you, if it's a steady beat, it can be one, two, three, four, one, two, <laughs> right? That doesn't make sense. No, it's steady. So it's always consistent. Again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, the thing that's also important is that there's a thing called the upbeat. Now, when you're counting in music, what you're going to do is say one and two and three and four and. All right? So... And I'm gonna show you something. Have you ever seen, um, have you ever seen people actually coordinate music, right? Um, the conductor, and he would be like this, right? Right, one, two, three, four, right? It, it, they all doing it. They all doing it, right? That's how important rhythm is. But again, I want you to just notice something. Look at my feet. Now we're gonna add the upbeat into it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right. So I hope that actually made sense for you guys. All right. So as I am playing the music, what I'm doing is one and two and three. And imagine this is my feet. One and two and three and four and. I'm counting that. So now let's play alongside the metronome. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and, right? That may have been kind of fast. I'll slow it down for some of you. And let's try it again. Two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right, it's that simple. Now let's see what happens as I'm counting out loud. If we're doing this the right way, the notes that we want should be the intended notes that we see on the note paper. All right, and I understand fully well that some of you may not even have logic, right? So how do you know? You may not be 100% perfect. We all humans, guys. So, again, this is not for you to be like a machine and you're going to be playing it 100% perfect. But if you do this type of practice, your sense of timing would be as close to perfect as possible. But, again, you cannot do that 
unless you're actually playing with a metronome. So again, I'm purposely gonna hold the note for two beats and notice what you're gonna see, all right? So did you notice that? Notice as I'm playing in counts of two, it's for the exception of that second measure where apparently the, it, I guess they read it as a mistake. But it's all right. Again, it's trying to be as close as possible. What I really want to emphasize to you is that notice, for the most part, because I was counting in two, lo and behold, what do we have? A white circle with a stem. <laughs> right? We have a white circle with a stem. But again, that was not our in desired note. We're looking for a whole note. So as you know, I need to hold it for four beats. All right, so I'm gonna say in my mind, one and two and three and four. And so let's try it one more time. perfect whole notes all right there was no mistakes again i understand fully well all of you may not have this program to see if you're playing it the right way but try your best now for those of you who might be playing trumpet or saxophone like you can't count while you're playing the note right i get it what i am trying to just tell you though is that in your mind there needs to be a some sense of keeping track of the time right so whether it be counting or whether it be tapping your feet, keep track of your tempo, keep track of your time, all right? You need to keep track of this steady beat so that you can play your notes properly. I'm gonna end it off here because again, in part two, we're gonna go deeper into rhythm, um, but here's what I would like you to do for homework. What I would like you all to do is to play around with the metronome. I want you to, play whole notes for four measures right and try your best to record yourself record yourself with a metronome and then when you listen and play back to yourself and you're counting out loud right what you're playing are you actually holding out the notes are you actually holding out the notes for the intended amount for example if you're playing a whole note and you're listening back to this recording and you're counting while you're listening to the recording, you realize that you actually did not hold that whole note for four beats, you actually held it for three beats. Then you know, okay, maybe you need some work on your rhythm. Does that make sense? Anyway, with that being said, I want you to do that four measures, right? And just in case I didn't make it clear, let's actually analyze this one more time, right? A measure is none other than these two bars right here right? These two bars, <laughs> okay, guys? And with these have five lines. You can see it. One, two, three, four, and five. It has five lines, and it has four spaces. One, two, three, four. So all you pretty much need to do is understand that within each measure, there's four beats, right? And that's the reason why, as I was playing it, you'll notice that I created a perfect whole note. All right, so what I want you to do, the same way you see here that I have four whole notes, I want you as well to produce four whole notes. I want you to play four measures of half notes, right? And I want you to tell me actually <laughs> how many half notes should be present within a four within four measures. And then last, I want you to play four measures of quarter notes. And then I want you to tell me how many quarter notes was present within the four measures. If you answer those questions correctly, then you clearly understand this aspect of rhythm. And we're gonna jump into the next one. Anyway, with that being said, you gotta do a falcon over and out. Jesus is king, y'all. Game to win. Game hard.